As you know, I have paused consistent uploads for now, but for the International Mathematics Day, Pi Day 314, I had to do a video and I decided on this beautiful exercise from Apostol's book, Principles of Analysis. We know that if f is a continuous function, then it satisfies the intermediate value property. That's how you prove a function has zeros if it's positive at some point and negative at some other point. We also know that the pre-images of closed sets are closed just by definition of continuity or maybe a, a little bit of variant of that. That pre-image of opens are open, which implies that pre-image of closed sets are closed. If you take a, the singleton closed set, if you take fix a value of R and you take this as the set, then pre-image of this is just the values of x, where f of x equals to r. So if, if is, f is continuous, then this is a closed set. The exercise is giving us a converse to these facts, that if f satisfies intermediate value property, and if these singleton preimages are closed, then f is continuous. And it's a bit stronger because you need to check this closeness of preimages only along rational values. Now the proof, which is by contradiction, suppose f is discontinuous at p, which we can assume to be zero, but I don't have to. There are many ways a function can be discontinuous. Unlike a continuous function, there isn't one way of visualizing a discontinuity. Uh, however, there are two amazing notions that we love because they always exist, and that is the notion of lim sup and that of the lim inf. These could be positive or negative infinities as well. Okay, if alpha equals beta and they are not infinities, then, because f is discontinuous, f of p is other than alpha. Okay, so because the limit exists, the only way for f to be discontinuous is to have the value uh, set to the wrong, wrong amount. And this will be in pictures that f actually is kind of deserves to be continuous, but somehow artificially the value has, has been changed. Um, this value, this common value is alpha equal beta. Now, why do, is this a contradiction? Because, because you can take, um, there exists some P prime very close to P such that for every X other than just P itself, F value at X minus alpha um, is very small. So we can take that any epsilon. So for every epsilon positive, that's by definition of limit. Now we can take, why can we just take, we take epsilon positive small so that this forces f of x um, outside the interval that is alpha minus epsilon, alpha plus epsilon for all such x. And while, uh, sorry, f belongs here, but the f value of p does not belong to this interval. Well, I, I, I kind of uh, did the wrong order for the sake of clarity. First, you pick your epsilon so that the second condition is satisfied and you take uh, the neighborhood where this happens by, continue, by, by existence of limits. But this contradicts
um, intermediate value property. Property. How does that happen? Take anything, take um, some y value, which is between f of p and alpha, but also not in alpha minus epsilon, alpha plus epsilon. Then, then the neighborhood of P has no X with F of X equal to Y. And that's the failure of the intermediate value theorem. So that was the first case that um, these limb soups are finite, they agree but the value is not there. So what is the other way that we can have discontinuity? The other way would be that alpha equals beta equals plus infinity or alpha equals beta equals negative infinity, um, which then implies, while of course, f of p has to be some, some real value then this case is just similar to above. Uh, you can have a neighborhood where values are way different from f of p, so you fail the intermediate value here. So dealing with the infinity and negative infinity cases and the equal cases, there is the next um, case where discontinuity can happen. Suppose, and that is where alpha is strictly less than beta. Um, if one of them plus or minus infinity, um, the analysis will be similar. So we assume that um, these are finite values. Okay. So we know that here is p, um, here is beta, here is alpha. Of course, lim sup and lim inf doesn't mean that there is a limit. The function can be really wild. But what is guaranteed is that there is some sequence of values, um, maybe on, on the other side, or maybe you just mix them up. But anyway, there are values of xk such that f of xk converges, so such that xk converges to p, and f of xk converges to beta, which is the limb soup. Such sequence exists by just a maybe definition of limb soup. Depending on what definition of limb soup you mean, is either the definition or just an easy corollary. And at the same time, there exists some other sequence which approaches p and f of y k values go toward the limb inf. By intermediate value property, there exists a third sequence. So for every x k y k with the same index, there is some z k between them, whichever is bigger, we don't know. Um, but we know that such that f of zk equals r. So what is r? I should have told you that I fix it in my mind, but not tell you. So fix r, a rational number, and in the in interval alpha beta, and uh, we don't want it to hit the special possible value f of p. So we kind of exclude what f of p itself is. So just pick another rational number. We just don't like that f of p. Okay, because r is between these values, remember that xk and yk values are close to alpha and the other is close to beta. 
So R is between them, there is some value ZK where F of ZK is R. Now, um, ZK, let's be precise, Z1, Z2, all of this sequence belongs to the set of X's where f of x equals r, because every single one of them is sent by f to the value r. But x, uh, but p, but p is not in the set x where f of x is equal to r by that choice of r. Um, notice that limit of zk as k goes to infinity is equal to p because zk is between xk and yk and both xk and yk converge to p. This shows that p is a limit point of f of x equal to r. By the way, f of x equal to r could be a much larger set. It may be intervals or whatever, or e and, and, and like that. It doesn't have to be just this discrete set of zk's. We know that it at least contains these zk's and these zk's converge to p, so p is definitely a limit point of the set, but p does not belong to this set. And this shows that f of x equal to r is not a closed set. And that contradicts the other assumption that for every rational value, this set was supposed to be closed. So we cannot have any point of discontinuity. So a very geometric proof. I hope uh, I got the pictures across quite smoothly. And um, that's something that I found very interesting back when I was an undergrad and I solved it all by myself. I don't remember if this was my solution back then or not, but I spent some time, maybe a few days on this problem. And once I solved it, I ha felt so happy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, maybe, who knows, someday you prove some function is continuous using this magical property. Until then, have a happy mathematics day. And see you in my future videos soon.